Well, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Couch Critics. Uh, today, obviously, as the title is indicating, we're going to be talking about the A League All Stars. It was a wasn't too long ago. Um, myself, I attended. Samuel didn't. I you watched it on from home, like the loser you are. W- wasn't willing to fork out fifty dollars for nosebleed tickets like I did, as you might have seen in my match day vlog video. Um, but yeah, I uh, for someone like I think there was a lot of talk. People were quite probably a bit pessimistic about the concept of the All-Stars coming back. And I have to say, I loved it. We saw Garen Quall rip up, showed off to Barcelona, and we had a pretty good account of ourselves. We led 2-1, ultimately lost 3-2 in the end. You know, when you're playing Barcelona, it's it's hard to, to keep up against any of those uh, big European teams, but really impressed uh, with the effort from the boys and really impressed with the kit. You know, I, I think it was a banging kit, especially that, the goalkeeper or the away kit, the black and yeah, the training goal kit was very nice. So yeah. ultra football, if you haven't done it already, release the kit for us, you cowards. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, obviously it was a great concept to have it back, but we think there's probably a few things um, the APL can change to make this hopefully an annual fixture, this fixture a little bit better. Um, and I guess I'm going to start off with my first suggestion is, not host it three days before the grand final. Either have it as a preseason game or a postseason, like the week after the grand final. Make that that kind of fixture so we can have the best available talent for us because we didn't get to see the likes of Jamie McLaren, who surely would have been in the team, like the likes of Matthew Lecky, Leo Lacroix, um, just to name a few players. Um, let's let's be honest. If Leo Lacroix was playing. Barca don't score at all. Oh, no. What, no hope. What a rock. What a rock. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think my thoughts on that, I, I agree, uh, just before the grand final. Although I think it definitely at a time where we needed a bit of, you know, pump up for the grand final. Mm. I'm not too worried about it being before, but I think if it's going to be a long-standing fixture, yeah, after the grand final is probably good. Um I'm not so keen on the preseason game because I think you see much more of a like a preseason fitness kind of thing happen. So you, yeah. you get your good yeah. players for about 25 minutes and then they're subbed off and then you get your youngsters. Whereas Barcelona actually fully game fit, brought it only 20 players. So they didn't just, you know, cycle three squads through. I mean, they had and, finished their season like three days or two days beforehand. Yeah, so yeah. they were so, they were fresh. And so I think you actually get better football towards the end of the season because teams have been together um, for that time. It might, and obviously it allows for the A-League grand finalists to, you know, the best players, the real stars of the season to have that opportunity to be part of the squad as well. So yeah, I think, I think that's definitely a way to improve the all-star concept. Yeah. Yep. Number two, what do you yep. think? I think the the narrative of playing someone like Barcelona or whoever it might be in the future of the All-Stars, because at least from what I saw, I mean, I never watched the TV coverage because obviously I was at the game, but I felt like a lot of the build-up was about how good Barcelona, so many Champions League, so many La Ligas, Lionel Messi played there is coming to town instead of, you know, this is a massive opportunity for the likes of Garen Qual, Eric Kunda, all our players to actually say, our talent in Australia is pretty damn good. We're going to go give it to Barcelona. And how awesome would it be to beat Barcelona, you know, one of the big clubs in the world? And I felt like that wasn't really that shone. I think it was more like kissing ass to Barcelona, which, you know, is exactly what they did when Man United and Juventus came all those years ago. So for me, yeah, that's probably what I thought. What did you think of the coverage, Simon? Because you would have watched it. Yeah, look... Uh- I think you're right there. I think a lot of it was based on Barcelona, which mm. look, they are one of the world's biggest clubs. It's, I think it's right to pay some attention to who you're playing yeah. and to, to bring them up to, to say how good it is that they're here. Yeah. But I think you're right. Um, it's on Australian television. It's a chance to particularly, I think the big thing is the narrative around the A-League at the moment, particularly from Euro snob kind of culture or you're just general like if I was talking to someone who didn't know anything about Aussie football, they'd go, oh yeah, but the A-League's not that good quality. And I think that's just the thing that we've kind of reinforced with this Barcelona match. 
oh yeah, the A League's not that good, but how cool that Barca came. Actually, let's turn that and actually start mm. talking positively about our league. We've got some really quality players. We've got some great young players coming through. Anthony Caceres, skill wise, and Jay mm. O'Shea, they're actually matching it with the Barcelona midfield. Mm. They will find it hard. You know, Danny Alves hacked Milos Ninkovic because Ninko kind of did a move on him. We've got quality players here. I think that's an unfair comparison. Garan Quoll. I think was the the one exception in the coverage. He came on and all of a sudden he actually got the commentators praising him and talking about how good he was and, and his opportunity. And hmm. and we actually have players like that. We we had decent players on the pitch. Um and so I think it's about flipping that narrative instead of talking our league down, oh yeah, but it's not as good. Actually saying our players are fantastic. And they can match it with the best. They can, you know, get two one up against Barcelona. Yeah, we've got players who who can do this, and and putting that so that the average Aussie actually goes, oh, the A League's all right. Oh, our Aussie players, we've got a chance. Of course, it would help if our national team was maybe performing a little bit better at the moment yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. The as long as it stays oh, Europe's where the awesome players are and, and little A-League, you know, we have our fun. We'll never actually get those casuals to respect the league that we've got and the players who, who work really hard and are fantastic footballers who would run rings about around every single one of them on a Saturday at Park Football. Mm. Like, we're not talking about these guys who just happen to get picked for Sydney FC and, and Wanderers and no, these are legitimate footballers who are good at what they do and, and and they need respecting. I think we don't respect our footballers enough. Yeah, and, you know, if any of these people just watch the season, any game, they can realise, you know, these are really competitive games. They're really good plays. I mean, people surprised at Garen Qual, you know, none of us are particularly surprised. We're more excited that he got his opportunity to show the world yeah, how good it. he is because... We know the quality of him and Urukunde and all the other guys that played for the All-Stars, well, most of them, we know how good they are, you know? And, yeah, I, and I, I, I've i read a few stories on Twitter and it seems like, you know, some people have been like, oh, wow, like these guys play every week. Wow, maybe we should, you know, go watch it. And so, you know, even if we can convert a 1,000 fans, you know, that's massive. And think about the last time when the All-Stars were here, when Man United came over for the first All-Stars. That was the time when also Liverpool came over the next year. We had Juventus for the it was a, It was a real boom time for football in the country. And did did we pick up a massive supporter base from these All-Stars games going to the A-League? Uh, you, you can never tell. But it was just a good time. It was a good buzz. It was great feel across Australian football. You know, these big clubs coming over, the A-League's doing fantastically it was just a great time. And if we can just get back to that, where the A-League's doing great, we get to see all these big clubs coming out from, from Europe. That's great. And we don't we don't hate European clubs. You know, we like football. You know, we like watching European football. Um, and, and it's just the snobs who think, I just want to watch, you know, the good teams in Europe. Yeah. So what? You, you, you know, there's plenty of Man United fans. And it's like, well, you talk, you, you want to go support the best teams. What are you doing watching those games? <laughs> um, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I you, what, watch European football. If you just want to watch European football, that's fine. Just just watch it. Don't come up with these bullcrap excuses of, well, the A League's not very good. I said, well, yeah, the Premier League and the A League is chalk and cheese. It's still a pretty damn good league. Absolutely. And and I think what you're saying there um, is in, important in terms of, I, I think this season it, it all felt doom and gloom, you know. Oh, we need these things to save the A-League. Actually, if we can get back to the point where, you know, the A-League is fine and these are fun events. I think that's what we lost sight of on soccer Twitter, <laughs> particularly, <laughs> that it was just a fun event. And actually watching it on TV with a friend was good fun. You know, when the All-Stars went up, you know, I was jumping up and down on my couch. Um it's great to have footballing 
teams come to Australia because it's a great holiday destination. New South Wales government threw a bit of cash at them too. Mm. But if we can build it up as a fun event to finish off the season or start off the season and kick off the A-League, I think they're fine in that capacity. I, I, yeah. I actually don't have a problem with them as long as they don't take away attention. So I, we, yeah. we want them to be the fun piece uh, not the they're not the bread and butter they are the dessert so you know i think when we can get the a-league back to a just a regular season not COVID affected get the crowds back stop over policing uh, active support yeah and and the league can actually start to grow momentum again then these things like a, an all-stars match you know and hopefully we can get some great teams like real madrid or inter milan or mm. these kind of guys um then they become a, a fun event that actually all of Australian football supporters can can get behind, whether you're a European football lover or you're an average A-League fan or you just like the Socceroos or actually you just play soccer on a Saturday and you want to check out a game. Mm. I think that's when these games work best. Yep. Yeah, I think the last thing I just want to say, unless there's anything else you want to say in terms of how we could change your side concept is take games to Brisbane or take games to Melbourne or Adelaide or Perth. Um, yeah. I think, I, I think Sydney's hosted all the games in the, the all-stars history, but you know, let's share it around. Like let's share this concept around all of Australia, maybe New Zealand yeah. or maybe Absolutely. just Australia. Absolutely. Suncorp, you know, op, uh, I don't know about Optus stadium. Uh, I'm not a big fan oh, the of Perth the round stadiums, yeah. you know, the MCG. We don't really have, something in between oh yeah we don't really have something rectangle in victoria bigger than amy park which is a bit disappointing but if we could get these games around let the rest of the world you know i think it would really work in melbourne and we've seen other kind of friendlies get taken other places yeah olympic stadium unfortunately seems to be the, the biggest rectangle that we can kind of get a team into and I think the Sydney government actually is just quite good at selling itself and getting these teams over. So I think that was the big push. Yep. Less so APL and actually New South Wales government saying, yeah, okay, let's let's sell Sydney. Um, yeah, so if you really want these things to happen in your state, get on. Vote for the current MPs. government. Is that what you're saying? Voting for your government? No, no. Just, just get onto your MPs and say, hey, this would be great for, you know, yep. revenue for the to the state let's let's yep. do it don't whinge about the government not doing anything when you haven't actually asked the government to do anything or if you yeah, just go in and right. donkey vote anyway that's com- completely getting off football um shall we leave it at that i think that's enough to talk about the a-league all-stars and you know just next time can we just play the entire qual family and i, <laughs> I think we'll win uh, or if we just play with garen qual just him and no one else that'll be good enough to um, anyway, guys, thanks for thanks for uh, sticking with us right to the end there. Let us know in the comments uh, what did you think of the All Stars concept and what did you make of our fantastic effort against Barcelona. Uh, hit us a like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.